Hi everyone and welcome. Today we will be talking about microservices and Spring Cloud. Here we have a definition from James Lewis and Martin Fowler which says that in short the microservice architectural style is an approach to developing a single application as a suite of small services each running in its own process and communicating with lightweight mechanisms often an HTTP resource API. These services are built around business capabilities and independently deployable by fully automated deployment machinery. There is a bare minimum of centralized management of these services which may be written in different programming languages and use different data storage technologies. Now this is all about the definition. You can think of it as a big application broken up into small pieces and each service is assigned to do a specific function. This architecture will provide flexibility of having small teams working on each service. When it comes to deployment, they can be deployed as Docker containers managed in Kubernetes. They can be written in programming languages of choice. Each microservice can have they can have a different schema, different storage and theoretically they should be loosely coupled. When you bring down one service for maintenance, the rest of the application should work seamlessly. Here we will start building our microservice with Spring Cloud. Let us see how much we can achieve to be true to the definition given here. Why I say this is he also has stated that as I talk to people about using a microservice architectural style, I hear a lot of optimism. Developers enjoy working with smaller units and have expectation of different modularity than, than the monolith. But as with any architectural design, there are trade-offs. In particular with microservices, these are serious consequences of operation who now have to handle an ecosystem of small services rather than a single well-defined monolith. Consequently, if you don't have certain baseline comp competencies, you shouldn't consider using the microservice style. So this is the basic definition and he has taught not to use microservices if you are not having the right competency. This is not to discourage you from learning microservices. <laughs> this is continuously evolving. When there is a problem, there should be a solution. There is a lot of buzz with this technology. We don't have to lag behind. So let us dive in. Let's, let us take a uh, look at this architectural diagram. So uh, we'll go through it. I think, uh, see, getting, uh, we'll go through all these definitions, architectural diagram, and we'll do a little bit of coding and see how it, it is easy to configure these microservices. So talking of the architectural di diagram, Maybe it will be quite overwhelming for you if you are seeing this for the first time. But be assured, remove the database and security. This, this is, will be a cakewalk for getting it configured. Now putting in the database and getting the security set at the gateway and control the access to the microservices. Yep, it can take a couple of hours of work but we'll go through it. Now to explain the diagram, you can see four microservices. Actually uh, in this demo we'll be using three microservices and the fourth one we'll be using it to demo demonstrate communication between the microservices. Explaining the flow, we'll be having a config server running. We'll be having a config server here which will be running. This will act as a centralized configuration server to deliver configuration to each, to each microservice. The service will pick up the configuration from the configuration server at the time of startup. This can be linked to a Git repository where all configurations of the application can be stored, but not limited to the Git, Git repository. Once started, all microservices will come and register with the discovery, uh, which is Eureka server in our case, and tell them, yes, I am up and running, my name is XY, and I am serving port 8080. Everyone will be obviously running at a different port. Now we will have a gateway that which will have the right routing information of all the microservices running. This gateway, once a request comes in, it comes to the gateway and the gateway decide whether to go to microservice 1 or microservice 2 or 3 or 4 uh, depending on the request that is coming in. And also we can configure a load balancer attached to it in the gateway. 
and see um, it will be on a round ro robin basis when we are using SUL API gateway. Uh, if you have two instances of microservice running, the API gateway will decide, uh, the load balancer will decide which one to go first uh, and it will be in a round robin fashion. Uh, too much of theory over here, I know, but it, um, too much of theory. Let us get into coding in the next video, but I thought I should give you a basic introduction of this microservice architecture and what we are going to build um, before we start with it. So, let's see, this is how we'll be configuring this. We'll be having a discovery server, which is Eureka, followed by a config server and the API gateway, which is Sul API gateway and the three microservices good morning good afternoon and good uh, and good evening now talking of the gateway in this case i will i'll be using a sul gateway and load balancer load balancer i am using ribbon both are netflix library but be aware that spring has put them into maintenance and come up with gateway and the spring cloud load balancer which is under active development but make sure you keep an eye on that uh, maybe uh, in the later days they will be coming out with a full fledged implementation for the, for the initial demo, we will not be using the database and the security layer. Now, in talking of this, uh, as I told you, the discovery server will be Eureka, the config server, API gateway, Sul API, and the load balancing with Ribbon. That's how we'll go about with the demonstration. Then, when, when you talk of Eureka server, all the microservice will register with Eureka server, and Eureka server will be aware of microservice running on each port with the IP address. Eureka server is also known as discovery server. Now, uh, talking of Sul API gateway, it will be receiving all incoming requests and, and then delegates the request to internal microservices. The advantage of this type of design is that common aspects like course, authentication and security can be put in a centralized service. So, all microservice coming in will be filtered at the gateway, uh, whether it, it can be authenticated, it will call the security layer and, uh, and get it authenticated and also authorized, we will be using OAuth uh, with our microservices. Now, talking of the config server, it helps us to have remote configuration for our applications. We can do this by creating a configuration server and all services can read from the configuration using the config server. The configuration server uses a git repository on GitHub where we store the configuration file. And now let us start coding in the next video. If you like this video, please do subscribe to my channel. I am not reading out the next one. Thanks for watching the video. Stay tuned for the next release. Thank you and bye.